All but essential services will be locked down at a pr- precisely 11.59 tonight. So what exactly does that mean for our biggest cities? Will the rubbish still be collected? Can you still wander along the waterfront? And can you expect some relief from your rates if you are feeling the financial squeeze due to COVID-19? Let's go first to Auckland Mayor Phil Goff. Mr Goff, can we start with homeless people? What's going to happen with them in Auckland? Well, they're obviously a particularly vulnerable group because of their often their medical conditions and they're exposed to the elements and they are probably one of the most difficult groups, particularly those sleeping on the street, uh, to mobilise. We as a council are working closely with uh, the Auckland City Mission Uh, So we're trying collectively to get as many people off the street as we can. There have been steps taken, for example, utilising motel accommodation, which is uh, readily available at the moment, as you might imagine, uh, to to, um, lower the numbers of people and groups like the James Liston Hostel, which uh, holds about 52 people, but it's too confined a a situation, so we need to spread people out. Uh, We also need to make sure that we can ensure services to uh, allow people that are uh, are on the street to eat when, when everything else is closed down. So does the government pick up the tab for that, or does the city? Uh, the city will be playing its part, um, but um, you know we're working. I mean, the substantial finance that may be needed for any initiative that will be taken will largely come from government. But we are, we are part. What we're trying to do, Lisa, is not to have 75 different responses to to this crisis situation, but to have a government all of New Zealand response, which we, as a as, as the country's biggest council, can play our role in. Now that may mean seconding staff uh, to groups like our district. Health Health boards. We've made that offer. We're working with the district health boards now. Some of our staff that aren't doing their normal activities are skilled people. We can make those skills available to help with the delivery of essential services. So I understand you've had a conversation with the Prime Minister today. What was the nub of that? Um, look, it's just to make sure that we are coordinating with central government as closely as we can. Um, I'm in huge admiration of how she has been so calm and collected dealing with a, a crisis of an unprecedented nature across our country. Um, I've asked to have a minister um, that is on the COVID-19 cabinet committee that we can liaise directly with. We can feed information. I'm Do you know who that will be? Uh, most likely to be Carmel Cipollone because she is both an Auckland minister and she's on the COVID-19 cabinet committee. But it's really important that um, I'm I'm setting up networks of um, local community and business leaders in Auckland so that we can feed information directly to government. We're not out on the street doing the things that we normally would to get feedback. So trying to deliberately create networks so that I can get input from community and business leaders in Auckland and in turn feed that on to government and for government to feed back information through us. Uh, That's another role that we can play as local government. Uh, Obviously the biggest role we'll be playing, as your intro suggested, is um, we're we're running essential services that must keep going. Uh, The supply of clean water, the disposal of waste water, uh, the picking up of rubbish uh, and recycling each week, uh, making sure that the port continues to open because that's a a lifeline for us in terms of the imported goods we need for our supermarkets. On that note... On that note, I just want to ask you a couple of quick questions if we can go through this because these are the things people are really interested in. Is there potential for rates relief if you're being hit financially by COVID-19? Well, under our normal rules, that will apply. Um, For for people that can't pay their rates, it's against people who won't pay their rates. Um, We're extraordinarily extraordinarily reluctant uh, to take action against those people. There'll be be people in all sorts of hardship uh, positions, and we will try to work out ways in which we can cope with that um, to enable people to survive uh, and without putting them under pressure. At the same time, of course, uh, we've got a, a limited income stream and we've got to remain financially viable, so we, we won't be able to do the big package type stuff that the government can do, uh, but under normal rates relief uh, programs, we will look to ease pressure on people who have no ability at all to pay their rates. Uh, clearly, you, you know, we're not going to try to get blood out of a stone. Right. We're not going to try to make desperate situations worse. So free parking, is it in the city at the moment, especially for people I, who are still I, going to work? 
I, I think one of the one of the curious side effects of this is that we're not going to have a congestion problem on our roads nor in our parking. There won't be that many people uh, in the city, and we won't be having our our uh, our, our traffic uh, wardens out there on the road. That's not an essential task, and we won't be putting them at risk. And before you go, who is in your bubble? <laughs> My wife and I at the moment, but uh, we, we, we do live on 20 acres, so we can spread around a little bit. The biggest, the biggest challenge, uh, I think, for my wife and myself is uh, there's at least a month where we're not going to be able to give our grandkids a cuddle, and that, that's quite hard as it is for every family. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for joining us. That is Auckland Mayor Phil Goff. Now, let's head down to Wellington, and Mayor Andy Foster joins us now. Andy, lots of people are going to want to do nice things for other people during lockdown. What is your advice around that? Look, we're, uh, we're just working on how we can best link the people who want to help with the people who need help, uh, because obviously we've got to make sure that we do that uh, safely. We, we know that we've got uh, a considerable student volunteer army, and I know that there are quite a number of people, for example, uh, who have contacted uh, some of our local supermarkets and said, hey, I can, I can help distribute food uh, to the people who need it. So these sort of things are starting to, to spring up. I've uh, heard about uh, some uh, possibilities of bringing together some, uh, some businesses that people can effectively have to drive in. Uh, service to, to pick up food. So there's quite a range of different things that, that people are looking at at the moment. So Wellington is a city of public servants. Are you assuming there's still going to be a few people moving around? Uh, look, really we're down, it'll be down to essential services like anywhere else. Um, and uh, if the public servants are essential to uh, the uh, the COVID-19 response then, or to, to critical services, then they'll be moving around. But for most of us, no, we'll be, we'll be tucked up at home. So what do you reckon the biggest challenge is going to be for your city? Oh, look, it's probably the same challenge that everybody else ha- is going to have. Uh, uh, but I think I shall, I've heard some really good advice from somebody uh, on the radio uh, this afternoon who'd just been through the, uh, the lockdown in China. And it was basically to say, well, look, make the most of this time because we don't often get that, that opportunity to spend uh, some time with family uh, or friends, uh, or friends, the, the people you live with. Uh, in an unbroken fashion, uh, to maybe slow down a little bit, to get some of those uh, tasks around the house done that maybe we've been waiting for a decade or so, and certainly in my case. Um, so some opportunities to, you know, to make the most of it. And as a city, I think it also gives us a chance, once we sort of uh, get used to this, uh, to, to raise some of the, the big questions that we, we need to discuss as a city anyway, and maybe we get people more focused on those issues. So when you're not going to be spending your time running the city, what's going to be your go-to project? Uh, with a fair bit of painting, uh, deck to uh, to deal with. The garden needs a bit of attention. Um, yeah, those kind of things. Let's get through the quick list of what's open, what's not, what's happening. So rates relief. Will you offer rates relief if people are feeling the pinch from COVID-19? Look, we're, we're, we're very, very conscious that our business community in particular and uh, their employees uh, who have, you know, their employees who've lost uh, jobs or had uh, hours truncated, they're the ones who we're most focused on. Uh, we will be looking at what we do with the, the final rates instalment of this year uh, and whether we can you know, defer payment uh, of that for people who, who need it uh, and then looking at what we do with the, the next year's um, rates as well. Uh, so, we, look, we're very, very conscious that it's, it's going to hurt council a lot, uh, but this is the rainy day that we need to, um, uh, to basically to borrow for some of these operating costs that we have to, have to spend. Are your parks and areas like the waterfront still open and can I run along those as long as I'm on my own? Look, there's uh, some places that you can run. Uh, we, today we did uh, close uh, Zelandia, the zoo, uh, Macro Peak Mountain Bike Park uh, and all of our 115 playgrounds. So you, you can get out and go for a, a run or a walk uh, in the bush tracks. Uh, I think the, uh, the waterfront will be fine provided you're, um, you know, you're keeping your distance from other people. But playgrounds aren't, and, and the reason for that is that uh, you, you don't know who has been there before. You don't know if they've been suffering from uh, the disease. And if they are, we know that the, uh, the virus will last on some of these surfaces, you know, plastic, glass, uh, metal surfaces for up to three days, so we can't take the risk that uh, the disease will be transferred uh, by keeping the playgrounds open. What's the deal with your buses? Uh, the buses are run by uh, Greater Wellington, um, but they will keep um, running on a Sunday-ish timetable. Uh, so the timetable is going to be tweaked a little bit so as to help particularly uh, people who are accessing the hospital, doctors and nurses. So they'll be running a little bit earlier and a little bit later than they would uh, normally on a Sunday. Uh, and is that free? Them. It's free, and people will be boarding from the back of the bus. 
so they don't have to interact and they, we don't want them to interact with the driver. The one piece of advice that I would give is please wash your hands before getting on the bus and then again after because, again, it's those, that surface contact you want to try and avoid transferring the virus. Andy, before you go, who's in your bubble? Uh, my wife and my two children, uh, two teenage children. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much. That's the Wellington okay, Mayor, Andy Foster. Let's go to Dunedin Mayor, Aaron Hawkins now. Hi, Aaron. How many students have gone home, do you think, from your city? Yeah, kia ora, Lisa. Um, it's only a month or so since the city roared back into life at the start of the university year, and, and here we are um, only a few weeks later um, facing a, an eerie silence. I don't, I don't have numbers certainly of, of how many have gone home and how many have stayed here, but it's certainly caused a lot of stress uh, for our student population, uh, not just the uncertainty of the situation, but obviously uh, the financial implications of having to make last-minute travel arrangements if they want to uh, go into isolation uh, with their own families, wherever they may be based. So have you felt that the city has really emptied out? Uh, what's well, hard to tell when nobody leaves the house. It's hard to know how many people are here. Um, but it, it certainly feels uh, very quiet, um, you know, more so even than, than the summer months do here. So the students who are sticking around and who may be staying in flats for this time, are they taking it seriously, do you think? Uh, well, one would hope so, and I, I don't think it's ever useful to try and speak of the student population as one homogenous group. So just like uh, all groups in our society will be taking this um, seri more or less seriously, uh, so would I expect they would. So your, your city, do you face any particular challenges, you think, um, over this four weeks? Obviously we're expecting to get into the cooler temperatures as well. Any particular challenges for you guys? I think the biggest challenge that we face is, you know, is the, as this wears on, is the, the cost of social isolation. We are a, a social being, a, a humans, uh, and I think being cut off from, from family and friends and colleagues uh, over the course of weeks uh, will take its toll, particularly for those people in our community who uh, don't have internet access, and, you know, that's... Uh, quite something when everybody's being told to FaceTime your gran instead of going to visit, that's fine if you can actually do that. And obviously all of the stuff around uh, self-isolation presumes that people have regular lodgings and a home to go to, and we know that for it, that's not true for everyone. So I think um, that's going to be particularly challenging for our more vulnerable population. Are you getting any particular help with that? Uh, certainly we're dealing with um, with the Ministry of Social Development around our, our sleeping rough uh, population. I know our city's chief executive has made direct contact with some of the more uh, regular visitors uh, to the CBD to make sure that they have somewhere to live. Uh, unfortunately, and do they? Our, and they do. They had they have places to stay, which is which is useful to know. Uh, the Dunedin Night Shelter has unfortunately closed temporarily, which offered uh, respite for some of them. And I know the MSD are working to find uh, temporary solutions for that cohort. I just want to go through a list of things that people are really interested in. So rates relief. Will you be offering that if people have financial trouble during this time? Certainly if people are struggling to pay their rates over the next wee while, uh, we would take a compassionate approach. If people got in touch with us, we can make arrangements for them uh, to pay that in a way that is um, that they can manage. Uh, and then certainly from July, uh, we're looking at um, not increasing our rates, setting a 0% increase in rates and borrowing money uh, to fund the operating shortfall instead. So what's the deal with rubbish collection in your city and how many staff have you got dealing with essential services on deck? I uh, don't know how many staff are dealing with it. The rubbish collection will continue as normal. Uh, recycling services have been put on hold and we're asking people to store that uh, until we're at the other end of this. Uh, but yet uh, our essential services uh, will continue uh, rubbish collection, uh, storm water, waste water, drinking water, paying the bills, all of that, uh, all of those essential services will continue. The rest of our staff will be uh, working from home. We've got about 25 uh, redeployed to support the Ministry of Health with contact tracing and, and other elements of the community response to COVID-19.
And so if people on their daily exercise, which they're still allowed to do, what bits of the city do they still have access or not access to? Well, the advice we've gotten, certainly the, Mike Bush has made this reasonably clear, the, the idea is that people can go outside for a walk, but, you know, go for a walk around your backyard or around the block. It's not a time to go for a hike in the hills. Uh, so I would uh, recommend to people that uh, they stay as close to home as possible and uh, getting their, uh, their necessary daily exercise over the next four weeks. Aaron, who's in your bubble before you go? Uh, my wife and my uh, and my four-year-old son. I'm still adjusting to setting up a working office inside a childcare facility. Good luck with that. Thank you so much for joining us. That's the Dunedin Mayor Aaron Hawkins. Now let's head to Christchurch and Mayor Leanne Dalzell. Leanne, your city has experienced some pretty tough times over recent years. How do you think people are going to cope with this extra pressure of being in a lockdown situation? Look, it, it is going to be hard. So I, I do want to say that. And a lot of people have reflected on the amount of or the significant number of challenges that Christchurch has had to face. Uh, and, uh, you know, and I'm not going to use the, the resilience word because people get uh, quite annoyed with that uh, phrase because it diminishes the anxiety that people feel at um, challenging times. And we're allowed to feel anxious and we're allowed to feel stressed. Um, and I think that that was a message that we learnt very much from the earthquakes when those aftershocks just kept on coming, even though we thought the worst of it was over. So, um, so, so we, we, we have been through this before, and every time we've been through some sort of adversity, we've always managed to reach out to each other, and that's something that we naturally do by instinct. But this time we have to reach out in ways that don't involve um, connecting physically with people. Uh, and so the messages that I've been giving is that, you know, our parks are still open, the playgrounds might be closed down, the Botanic Garden sadly has to close down under these circumstances as well. But the park is open, lots of open space, you know, and, and the wonderful thing about being a garden city is that this is the moment that we can enjoy that and we can still wave out to each other. We can still connect in, in sort of non-verbal ways. There's just a smile and a wave and a hi. How are you going? We're all in this together. That really will go a long way. So I am encouraging people to do that as long as they keep their distance. Do you have contingencies in place should there be another emergency for your city during this time? For example, an earthquake. Look, yes, we've got we've we've had we've had pandemic um, uh, planning on our sort of risk radar for uh, a, a significant amount of time. I mean, we actually in Christchurch, uh, you won't even know this, uh, had a small outbreak of H1N1 in in 2009. The preparation work that went into that and actually uh, led to it being fully contained within a very small area of Christchurch. Uh, so so we, we, we were well prepared and well planned for uh, that got us through that. And most people didn't even know, but actually the planning and the work that went into that, that made sure that we were better prepared when 2010 happened, which was the first of the earthquakes. So every experience that we go through uh, better prepares us, and we're always aware. In fact, we were even talking today about the fact that we have to recognise that this, we still have other vulnerabilities, we still have other risks, and we have to make sure that we keep um, both headroom from a financial sp space, but we also need to know what would happen if this happened. Now, we're in a state of a national um, emergency right now, so that actually has given central government uh, all of the powers that it needs to deal with this. Uh, if we were to face another emergency on top of that, uh, then we'd simply find ways of uh, collaborating with central government to make that work for our city as well. We're, we've been very well prepared this time. The incident management team of the city council was stepped up on the um, end of January, and uh, so um, they've been working towards this eventuality, um, you know, of a lockdown uh, for you know a good two three months, and uh, and that got us into the position where we're able to keep the essential services of the city running.
Look, we're just hours away from going into complete lockdown. Before you go, let us know who's in your bubble. My husband, my husband Robbie, and uh, yeah, he's he's got the office in our little inner city apartment, so I can see what's going on in the city. Uh, it's very, very quiet in there at the moment, but no, Rob's got the office and I'm out in the lounge. Really appreciate your time this evening. That is Christchurch Mayor Leanne Dalziel.